is up everybody welcome to my channel my name's tyler you also can call me the geode cracker and collector many of you are here on my channel because recently i showed you guys how to spot a geode which is pretty cool but now i've got a bunch of people that are asking me all right cool tyler now i know how to spot a geode what the heck is a geode why do i want to spot a geode what what are they well wonder no more because tonight I'm going to be trying to explain as easy as I can what a geode is, how they form, where they form, and why on earth we like them so much. So if this has been a question that you've had, sit tight and it will be answered shortly. All right, so here we are in the shop once again, and I've got a few different things laid out. Now, I know that is a lot. Don't be overwhelmed, please. I promise that is all going to make sense. <laughs> First thing that I want to address is the what. What is a geode? Well, these are all geodes right down here. Even these ones up here are geodes. But a geode is defined as a round or rounded rock that bears some sort of crystal or mineral cavity inside. So here's an example of one that's already been cracked open that's got some quartz in it. Here's an example of one that's got some botryoidal chalcedony inside. Okay. Now, another important thing, I do not want you guys to confuse these with thunder eggs. Thunder eggs are something completely different and on a different day, we're gonna have a video where we put these two side by side and we figure out what is the difference between a geode and a thunder egg. But for now, don't even think about the word thunder egg. Get that out of your head. Get it out of here. We don't need it. So a geode has a hard outer shell we will call it you can call it a crust whatever you'd like but this shell forms first and it's normally formed with a harder material like chalcedony or quartz and it makes it more resilient to the elements and erosion meaning that these geodes are going to be left behind for us to find someday just like their nature's easter eggs so Geodes are classified as secondary formations. I will have those words on the screen for you. <clears throat> they are secondary formations that are found inside of igneous as well as sedimentary rocks. So what does that mean? Well, basically, this tells us that there are two main methods or two main processes that we know about that these things can form. If you are familiar with my channel and you've watched me before, you've seen me do some geode collecting, you know that I do collecting here in North America in the United States, and I do a lot of collecting in the Midwest. So in the Midwest is where we find these geodes, which are sedimentary geodes. So sedimentary geodes are going to be primarily found in limestone but they can also be found in shale. And these geodes often take the places left behind by different types of organic matter that fall into the sediment. So as that limestone is forming, you all know we find fossils in limestone quite often. This is a little horn coral here. We've got a little brachiopod here. And we've got another brachiopod over here. So. These types of things, shells and corals and crinoids even, those things are organic. So oftentimes we find them preserved and other times that organic matter just completely decays and leaves us with this cavity left behind for other minerals and things to fill in. So when we have a horn coral that decays and fades away, can give us a geode like this that was formed in the space left by a horn coral or even this crazy looking thing <laughs> this is a horn coral or you have things like this that are a little bit harder to see this one has been glued back together because it cracked but this is a gastropod. This is a coiled shell, like a snail shell. Over here, we've got one on its way to becoming a geode. You can still see some of the striations. You can still see 
that hinge of the shell itself. And then we have bigger ones like this, where it's obviously a geode, but we still have that hinge underneath. So Indiana is loaded with these geodized fossils. One last example over here I'm gonna show you. This is a geode, but this is a crinoid calyx. So this is pretty crazy. So those were some sedimentary geodes found in Indiana. The second way that we know that geodes can form is inside of igneous rocks. That is right, I'm talking molten hot lava, or what's left of it anyways. So when magma is flowing, say it's flowing over, over the side of a volcano, or say there's an underwater volcano that erupts, as soon as that lava hits that water, it's gonna solidify the outside of that pocket. And then inside is gonna leave some more molten, molten magma. But as we know, igneous rock can be porous. So in those cases, we're hoping that some of that magma that is trapped inside is just gonna leak out and it's gonna leave that cavity, leave that pocket for us. So that's what happens when it's in an underwater volcano or when there's lava just flowing over the side of a volcano and you, you've got big lava flows and things like that. Same thing, gas pockets get trapped inside of there. That gas doesn't have a chance to release. You know, it really wants to, but it finds itself caught and trapped. And then that's gonna solidify and it start to harden and it's gonna leave us with this little cavity here. So like we talked about with the sedimentary geodes, all they need is that cavity, but that's cool and all, when does the geode happen? So what, what, what's next? Well, we've got these pockets, whether they're in limestone or whether they're in igneous rocks. And the only other ingredients that we need next are time and water. So over extended periods of time, mineral rich waters, saturated waters, from groundwaters, floodwaters, rainwaters, things like that are gonna seep in to these pockets. They're gonna seep into the stone because it's porous. Even in these geodes that form inside of limestone, if you look at it on a molecular level, it is porous. So there's gonna be a way for water to pass through. It's not gonna happen instantly, but where there's a will, there's a way. So these mineral rich waters will seep inside of these geodes, inside of these pockets and Depending on what minerals are inside, say their silicates or carbonates are gonna get trapped inside of these pockets, which leads us to our third and final ingredient we need for a geode, which is time and lots of it. Sometimes it's thousands of years, sometimes it is millions of years and I'm not even joking when I say millions of years. So these cavities, the minerals will get trapped inside and just like at home, if you were making your own borax crystals or if you're making your own rock candy, you know that if you make your super saturated solution and you give it time to settle, you're gonna get crystals that are gonna form. So based on the composition, how many carbonates are gonna be in this water or how many silicates are gonna be in this water are gonna lead you to the different types of minerals that we are gonna find inside of our geodes. Which leads us to the most important part. How in the world do they wind up in the hands of people like you and like me? Well, either we go looking for them, like in this video up here, or we go looking for them in creek beds where they've had a chance to just kind of fall away. If you did see my how to spot a geode video, you will know that's how a lot of the geodes that I find in Southern Indiana are found is Erosion happens, a creek comes by and washes away that limestone and then just exposes tons and tons and tons of these geodes. Or we find out where they are and we take our hammers and we take our chisels and we take our pickaxes and we go looking for them. Either way, these things are pretty resilient on the outside. So this is nature's, like I said before, this is nature's perfect Easter egg that she made for us. So I love them. You've seen me collect them here on my channel and you can find them literally all over the world. All over the world you can find geodes. That does not mean that they're everywhere. They're not in every single place. They're in a lot of places and a lot of spaces all over the globe. But 
If you are in the United States like I am, I'm a Chicagoan born and bred. But if you are in the U.S. like me or you're visiting the U.S. like me, here's a quick list of some states where you can find them. Arizona, California, Utah, Nevada, Missouri, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee. That's 10. That's one-fifth of the states right there, and I know there's a couple more that have them. Those 10 states are some of the places that are known to have some geodes. So, now that you know how to spot them, now that you know what the heck they are, all you gotta do is go out and find some for yourself. So, I challenge you to do that. Go out and find some geodes this spring and summer, and let us know what you find.